Good morning. One more. Um, my history goes back a little ways. I went to Raymond Bible College. It was in Tulsa, Oklahoma with uh, Kenneth Hagin. Um, at the time, I was maybe 21 years old. I was just seeking God. I might have been saved before then. But I remember going to a Pentecostal church uh, outskirts of uh, within uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Uh, the actual church, I mean, the actual Bible college was Rama Bible College in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, I was there about nine years and went through a lot of uh, Bible studies. I studied my Bible from back cover to the cover to cover, marked it had a King James Bible, other than like a lot of them. That was kind of weird. My dad found a King James Bible in the middle of the road one night, drove up on it in the middle of the night and gave that to me. It was opened up. I don't know what verse it was opened up to, but my dad said uh, there was a Bible in the middle of the road. He stopped and got that Bible, and he gave it to me. I don't have it right now. I wish I had kept it. I don't know what happened to it. But going forward uh, on, on speaking on tongues and, and uh, well, in this Pentecostal church, I remember they asked me to come to, to, for intercessory prayer. I might have told this story already once before, but just uh, given, uh, I got a reason why I'm, I'm, I'm coming to this conclusion. And just remember, I'm not putting down those that speak in tongues, okay? This is not for you, whether you did or not. This is not um, to say what happened to you was not real, but I want to tell you, um, there's three ladies. It was intercessory prayer. They asked me to come to, and there was only three ladies. It was darkened a little bit in the church, but we were only, I was the fourth person there. There's only three old ladies. Uh, some of the... Uh, I wouldn't call them deacons, but they were the ladies in church that were interceding, and they anointed. But what what happened is I was just praying in my regular understanding, okay, what I knew to pray. But they said, Danny, they anointed me with oil. They anointed me with oil and said, just start praising the Lord, praise the Lord, and I started praising the Lord. So they just said, let it out, let it out. And I started, you know, all of a sudden, somebody said, I got more rats, you got money, all that stuff, right? So I'm running around. I'm, I hope that I don't uh, hurt anyone. I'm not putting down whether you've been speaking in tongues or not. I'm just going to tell you something. Let, listen, before you just turn this thing off, okay? They had me run around the church, run around the church. Speaking in tongues, praying, running up and down on altars. It was just us. All I'm saying, let's keep in one thing in mind. Does that prove you're saved? Does that prove you're saved? Are you sure that that's what you got, the Holy Spirit? Friend, I beg to differ. God ask for one thing is that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and him crucified there's a way that man thinks he thinks is right but the way is there in his death it's not that the speaking in tongues whether it was the Holy Spirit or not but the Holy Spirit I believe would uh, go with what I'm saying right now is that it's not that you depend on that well I spoke in tongues I guess I'm saved because I spoke in tongues I guess that means I have the sign that I'm saved. No, friend, it does not. It, that does not qualify you to believe that you have salvation. Salvation is an act of your own will that you trust on what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you at the cross, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. That Jesus and it's a will. It's not. It's not that. That's not proof of salvation. I know that's going to step on some toes, but I'm going to tell you that don't prove that you are saved. <laughs> How do you know where that came from? 
How do you know it? The thing we can control is what we believe. We can control what we believe. And what we believe is Christ and him crucified, that he died for our sins, was buried and rose again. That gospel, the power of God to every man, and God turns no one away that comes to him as a sinner in need of salvation. A man that's like that becomes God. I realize I need a savior. I know, realize I sinned against you. But I come to you right now, and I believe that you are the Son of God that died for my sins, was buried and rose again. Speaking in tongues does not save you. And don't prove you're saved either. That ain't going to give you comfort in your heart. That ain't going to give you stability in your mind. And they ain't going to give you stability. That has no proof whatsoever. What is it that you believe? What did you trust on? Who are you counting on for your eternal soul and your salvation? It's not speaking in tongues, friend. I guarantee you that. Don't mean to be harsh. Just saying. Just saying. Think about it. Think about it. Oh, I might have. I might have gotten, uh, I might have spoken tongues. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you, that's not proving anything that you're saved or not. That's not it. That's not it. What proves you're saved is what do you believe? What do you believe that saves you? Is it the gospel? Is it the gospel what Christ did for you at the cross? Or is it not? Well, I think uh, there's a dividing line to be said right there, friend. Because if you don't believe the gospel, I don't care how many words you can come up with and speak in tongues and all this thing and all that. And I don't care how what your experience was. Your experience does not count for salvation. Your experience has nothing to do with seeing angels. Your experience has nothing to do with seeing... I don't... But Paul said... Whether you see an angel or whatever thing comes to you, if they speak not the gospel that we preach, let them be accursed. I don't care if an angel came down to you after you spoke in tongues and said, you're saved. Ask them, what is it that I must do to be saved? If they can't say the gospel, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he was died for my sins and was buried and rose again. If they can't say that, <laughs> friend, friend, that is accursed. They're, I don't care what they are or what they look like unless you believe what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you at the cross and that's all you're counting on for salvation, not your good works. Now, how many times you went to church, how good of a person you were, you're lost. You are lost. Now, I know that's harsh. But you got to trust on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Period. Period. There's no other way where a man must be saved. The only way. The only way. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. Trusting on that Jesus Christ. You decided, Lord, I'm believing on you. And what you did. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm a sinner. But I believe that what you did, and I believe that you give me everlasting life today, today, right now. And once you believe that, friend, then you are saved. Then you have assurance of salvation. Not before or not after. It's not an experience. Sorry. It's not an experience. I'm sorry I busted bubbles, but it's not an experience. I don't care how saved you think you are or how you feel you're saved. Unless you believed on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are lost as the day is long. I'm sorry. I love you, but you got to believe the gospel. Amen. Amen.